is an award-winning journalist who has appeared in the Los Angeles Times and the Des Moines Register. His writing has appeared in numerous publications, including the New York Times. He's the author of Pigeons, the fascinating saga of the world's most revered and reviled bird. Andrew Blackman joins us live via telephone. Hi, Andrew. Welcome to Now This Interview. Thank you. So why did you write a book about pigeons? Well, I never thought I'd spend two years researching pigeons, um, but the more I learned about them, the more fascinating I was. Um, I first learned about them when I was at a corner store and ordering a tuna sandwich, and the gentleman there in line next to me started telling me about his racing thoroughbreds, and he was actually talking about pigeons. I was intrigued, so I went out and visited him the next day, and before he knew it, I was writing a book. Wow. Uh, now, the pigeons are referred to as rats of the sky, and you even point this out, uh, by Woody Allen in the movie Stardust. Besides the fact that they are, you know, disease-ridden by most people, and I seem to think so myself, why do you think that the pigeon has this bad reputation? Well, you know, it's just misinformation. It's just unfortunate. It's just, uh, it's just bias. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since, uh, you know, for about 10,000 years, the pigeon was our best friend. Um, it delivered news of the Olympics in 776 B.C. 2,500 years later, it delivered word of Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo. Julius Reuters used the bird to uh, start his news-gathering empire. He literally delivered the news by pigeon. Um, Darwin proved, uh, worked to prove his theory of evolution using pigeons. And uh, one million of the birds served in World War One and World War Two and saved thousands of soldiers' lives. Literally one million Pigeons served in World War I and World War II, saved thousands of lives um, by delivering critical messages. Now, about 10, 15 years after the, after the last World War, we had um, the rise of the pest control industry, and there was just some lingering, I guess, fear of the bird, you know, in terms of being dirty, which is actually wrong. But the pest control industry seized on that, and they, uh, they started really pumping a lot of money into it to uh, propagate the myth that the bird is just disease-ridden and, and a horrible creature. Nothing can really be further from the truth. It's actually, it carries no more diseases than you or I. It seems to be immune to most of the bird diseases, like avian flu and West Nile virus. And uh, it's actually a very gentle creature. For 10,000 years, we've, uh, we've had a great relationship for it, with it for about 50 of the last years. It's been uh, in the nosedive. Right. I, I certainly know that when I go to the park, I give them some bread. <laughs> okay. Uh, why do you think that uh, people have come to misunderstand the bird, and, and how have they come to misunderstand the so-called revered and reviled bird? Well, you know, like I said, it's just happened the last, like, 50 years or so. You know, a bird that has been, been celebrated as a, you know, as a hero and as a companion for 10,000 years uh, has suddenly become a bit of an enemy and uh, public enemy number one, a nuisance. It's uh, just something that's happened in the last 50 years. I mean, after World War II or during World War II, they were received uh, heroic, you know, welcomes from, you know, celebrated veterans saving troops. And uh, shortly thereafter, they were seen as rats with wings. Huh. Now, you're obviously the expert here. You wrote the book on pigeons. Uh, what's one very important fact that the average person should know about pigeons? You know, something that, you know, it's an important fact. You, you know, you tell it to them, and they can remember this and tell it to their friends. And, you know, we can kind of change the, the face of the pigeon as being, you know, the so-called disease-ridden uh, bird. Well, <clears throat> one thing I'd point to is one million of the birds served in World War One and World War Two, and they saved thousands of our boys' lives by delivering critical messages through, through barrages of gunfire. So I think that alone, I think, makes you think that the bird deserves a second look. 
They're right. very gentle creatures, been with us for, for thousands of years. And it has a wondrous history. You know, I haven't even talked about the racing aspect. Hmm. Okay, uh, now, while riding pigeons, you tracked down Mike Tyson. Now, I found this fascinating because I didn't know that he was a lover of pigeons. What's this all about? Yeah, he's probably the most famous American pigeon lover, um, although the Queen of England is probably the most internationally famous one, although most people don't realize it. But uh, Mike Tyson grew up in, the, in, the, you know, in, in really just a horrible circumstances, you know, in a tenement building in, in, in you know, a, a very downtrodden ghetto neighborhood. And his only, his only ability to feel freedom was to watch, let his birds loose from the roof of his building and watch them fly around for hours. And they always came back to him, and they really wanted nothing back, nothing from him other than a little bit of bird seed, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, uh, and, and you know, a place to call home. Either that, or maybe a boxing lesson. But anyway, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also spend time with Queen Elizabeth's pigeon handler in England while writing the book. Uh, how was that experience, and what was that experience? Well, it's a, it was a. Uh, I mean, who'd have thought that the Queen of England was a big pigeon person? But she actually has a, uh, a flock of pigeons. Um, they're racing pigeons. Uh, now these birds are birds. You know, her, her pigeons, just like all racing pigeons, can fly 600 mile races, averaging 50, 60 miles an hour, uh, without stopping for food or water. They find their way home from a place they've never been before. I imagine that five, 600 mile races, flying at about 50, 60 miles an hour. You know, compared to a racehorse, uh, your average racehorse is only going about 35 miles an hour for about a mile and a quarter in a closed track. Now, her birds, uh, you think that, you know, they were in one of her palaces, you know, but they were in the backyard. They didn't have any golden nest nesting spots, but uh, they were pretty birds, and she actually had a royal pigeon handler. Her father and grandfather were also pigeon fanciers, and they received their birds from the, the uh, King of Belgium. Hmm, interesting. Uh, now, you write about a movement in New York, the pro-pigeon underground. Now, what takes place there? Well, people uh, love pigeons and the people hate pigeons. And these are the folks that keep an eye on the haters. They basically rescue injured pigeons, but they also keep a close eye, you know, and kind of like a, a careful eye because uh, with like cameras and notepads and that sort of thing, undercover work. Because every day uh, there's poachers who come into New York City in vans at the crack of dawn and poach hundreds of pigeons with nets, and then they take them across the state line to eastern Pennsylvania, and there they're used as live target practice with sh- for shotguns at gun clubs. So the Pro Pigeon Underground is, is trying to keep an eye on that and put an end to it. It's a pretty brutal sport, and it's actually legal. Uh, have you thought about the subject of your next book? Yes, the subject of my next book is uh, about age-segregated cities, um, basically giant retirement communities, but these are huge and people often aren't retired. The book's called Leisureville, um, Adventures in uh, America's Retirement uh, Utopias, and it will be released in the spring. Andrew, thanks for being a guest on Now This Interview. Thank you very much. For more information on the book Pigeons, the fascinating saga of the world's most revered and reviled bird, visit andrewblackman.com and myspace.com slash andrewblackman.